Rejoice not, that's just a timing device, tells us when this came forth, this prophecy. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken, for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. God is using metaphor here. Because he's saying, if you think what you had was bad, it's going to get worse, and after that, it's going to get worse still. That's right. Out of the frying pan into the fire. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall all, shall be, shall, pardon me, shall lie, wait, i got to turn the page here. <laughs> shall, it's funny angle here, okay. Shall lie down in safety, and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Now, God is going to take care of the poor and the needy. But look out, everybody else. Okay? Yes. And by the way, as these powers of darkness rise up, it's the righteous who become poor and needy. Okay? Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina are dissolved. For there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. And we know Zion is the very mount of God, according to Hebrews chapter 12. We are come unto Mount Zion. When you're in the true church of Jesus Christ, you are at Mount Zion. You are there, according to Hebrews chapter 12. And he's saying here, What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? The Lord hath founded Zion. And that foundation is the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and that is the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, Howl, O gate, cry, O city, the whole Palestina, all of Palestine is being dissolved. It's about to be. That whole area on the, the ultimate east of the, Med the Middle Sea, the Mediterranean Sea, God will bring absolute judgment. And this is what this is a picture of. The demise of Satan and of all that follow him will be brought down to nothing. Okay? That didn't take long, did it? No. <laughs> but that did take us all the way up to our break. So. <laughs> it did? Okay. Yep. Uh, Pat, uh, first, Dr. Rice, thank you for taking your time to go over those verses. So, yeah, that's that's good. I mean, uh, I guess, yeah, if, if that was a skip over, uh, thankfully we have that on recording now. So we'll somehow work that way into the Isaiah series. <laughs> That's later good. on That's so good, yeah. um but anyways we'll go ahead now and uh take go ahead and take a fifth a five minute break and we'll come back for the second half with more of the questions so uh thank you very much again for listening to that bible study thank you again pastor meyer for uh helping us understand but most importantly thank god for the wisdom that has been brought forth uh so far with this q a so we're gonna go ahead five minute break uh, go ahead stretch your arms stretch your legs have some time with the Lord, and we'll be back in five minutes. Thank you very much. All right, well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting second round of Q&A. I'm Brian Erickson, once again, joined here uh, live at Pastor Meyer's house, and we have another special guest. Pro has once again entered into the uh, conference here, and uh, hopefully he'll share us some words of wisdom that the Lord gave him, so <laughs> yawning at me. All right. Well, it sounded like Robert had a qu uh, audio question. Robert, uh, are you ready for that question, or do you want to uh, continue on until you get ready? Okay, well, we're going to go ahead now and go to Robert, and he has an audio question for us. Let me just get ready here for him, and whenever you're ready, take it away. Mic check. Thanks. Um, I just had a question about a verse here, and I need to pull it up. Do you have the verse there, Brian, that I asked? It was 
I think it was John. I pulled up other verses. Sorry, I misplaced it. Um, it's about when the Lord baptized, or not baptized, but washed the feet. Oh, you don't have it? Okay, one second. I can pull it up real quick. I know where it's at. Um, it's John 13, 7 through 17. If you could post that one. Um, I need to get it pulled up here. It says, uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt... Well, first, I guess it's verse 6. Then he cometh to Simon Peter. He's washing their feet, right? Okay, I missed it by a couple verses there. Sorry. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And after he poureth water into a basin, he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do now, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him and said, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter say, saith unto the Lord, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. <laughs> Just totally, Peter. Uh, Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed indeed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. <clears throat> he says, uh, So after he had washed his feet and had taken his garments, was set down again with them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye stay well, for so I am. And if if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should have, should do as I have done. That's about as far as we need to go there. Um, I, I, so what I, my question is, Pastor, I found a couple verses that I thought maybe have a connection to this. I'm wondering if this is a, primarily was a physical example he used to show us a spiritual truth. Here we have in Ephesians 5.26 that he might sanctify, he's talking about, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. And the other one I found here was this First Peter 1.13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thanks. Okay, so my question is, is am I kind of off base here? Do you see kind of like the girding up? He girds himself up with the towel and uh, and then the washing of the water by the word. If he's using a physical example of being washed by the word of God, and I just wonder what other thoughts he might have or if I'm way off on that. Thanks. Okay. okay. No, you're certainly not off on that at all. You're right on. Because really, we need to look at it this way. What's happening there with the foot washing is that the Lord is dealing with the, uh, the essential spirit that he's dealing with there is humility. And he's doing away with all pride. Of course, foot washing was a common thing back then because the type of footwear that they wore, uh, they got quite dusty and dirty as they walked uh, through the uh, the dry streets and so forth and, and the terrain of that area. And so it was very common that you would always wash your feet. So what he's doing here, though, is he is showing, first of all, by example, that he being the master is willing to condescend to a low estate of washing their feet and that they also should do this. They should condescend as well because when they are void of all pride then Satan is completely out of the picture. The devil cannot exist where there is a true spirit of good honest humility among everybody. And so he was getting them in one mind, in one accord, gird up the loins of your mind and this is what he did he was, uh, in order to gird up the loins of your mind, 